Howdy folks, I'm Score, the Crimson Renegade, and welcome to Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, a Fragmentary Passage. This is, um, uh, obviously it's a Kingdom Hearts game. This goes, um, right along with, uh, as far as the, um, the chronological storyline goes, this game, uh, is supposed to go, uh, is supposed to coincide with the events of, uh, Kingdom Hearts 1. Uh, actually, uh, to be more specific, uh, they're more along the lines of just be just before Kingdom Hearts 1, leading up to the events of the end of Kingdom Hearts 1. Um, so basically, just what, what, what happened in Kingdom Hearts 1 is happening now as I'm playing, as the storyline goes on of this game here. Uh, this is uh, obviously Birth by Sleep, you can tell by the character on the right, you remember her from Birth by Sleep, that's Aqua from Birth by Sleep. <clears throat> Uh, I have played this game once before, and the, the, the first time I played it was when I recorded it before, before my hard drive, my big hard drive crash that I had. I, uh, before I, before that happened, I had played through all of the games that I was going to play for the channel uh, in the Kingdom Hearts series. Uh, Birth by Sleep, Kingdom Hearts 2, Chain of Memories, um, and uh, uh, Dream Drop Distance. Um, before though, before those though, Dream Drop Distance and Birth by Sleep were completely blind runs. I had never played them before that point, so unfortunately, now that I now that I have to re-record them, I had I can't say that I have played them at least once. So there may be I'm not going to be like it's not going to be a hundred percent blind, but um, you know I, I'm just nothing I can do about that. But um, so what I can tell you is this follows Aqua, as you can tell. Um, I, I won't. T I won't tell you. I won't go too much in the detail about the storyline, but it's going to be just Aqua by herself. We're not going to be d d unlike Birth by Sleep. We're not going to be switching between Aqua and Terra and Ventus. It's going to be strictly just an Aqua game, um, and it's also a very short game. I believe when I played it the first time, I finished it in just about two hours, maybe. Compared to other uh, Kingdom Hearts games, this is extremely short. It's an extremely short game. Um, also what I can tell you is this game was made on the Unreal Engine, and unlike other, unlike all of the other Kingdom Hearts games, at least of the ones that I'm able to play on the, the, uh, 1.5, 2.5 remix and the 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue collections, um, this game looks tremendously different, and I'll show you when I get in the game. Uh, it's actually a, 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 a it's, 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 when I say it, it's actually a good thing. It's, it's I'm like completely complimentary on it. If you didn't know you were playing a Kingdom Hearts game, you wouldn't think it was a Kingdom Hearts game by the way it looked, because it just looks incredibly good. Uh, if they're going, if I hope that the Kingdom Hearts three is done the same way, because this game is absolutely beautiful. I mean, sometimes have a bit of that cartoony look because it is a Kingdom Hearts game. But you, you can see Aqua over there on the right. That's not a that's not a cutscene or, or a, a, a looping um, pre-rendered uh, video there. That's actually what she looks like in game, and that is incredible compared to the other Kingdom Hearts games and the environments. Everything. This, this is a very very beautiful game. I really hope Kingdom Hearts Three looks this good. So I think I've said enough about this. Let's go ahead and get into it. Um, one thing I want to uh, mention here at the beginning of this episode. Uh, I want to apologize in advance um, for any of the Kingdom Hearts games that has any cutting out, uh, any audio of the game that like cuts out or ecstatics or anything like that. Uh, usually what I try to do in my games when I'm recording is I'll turn down the sounds of the game itself as it records because some volumes get so loud that it actually drowns out my recording software and all it ends up doing is just turning into loud static or just cutting out the audio altogether. And sometimes you might hear some weird sounds. Um, unfortunately, Kingdom Hearts doesn't allow me to change the uh, volume of anything at all. I can't change a lot. I usually, like I said, usually lower the volume of sounds in games. I can't do that with the Kingdom Hearts series. So I apologize for any past Kingdom Hearts games and any future games that don't give me the option to change the volume itself. Uh, so if you guys hear any kind of loud sounds that get suddenly cut off or loud static, I apologize in advance. There's nothing I can do about that. I can lower the volume of the edit when I edit it, while which the edit the video, which I always do. But the sounds themselves, when they're initially recorded, are going to be static out if they're just too loud for the software to handle. 
So just a warning on that. With that said, let's go ahead and get into Kingdom Hearts 0.2 Birth by Sleep, A Fragmentary Passage. Probably the longest titled game in the Kingdom Hearts series. Uh, I'm going to play on beginner because, I mean, I probably could play on standard since I have played the game before and it wasn't really that difficult. I don't think I died at all the first time I played it. But I'm going to go ahead and play on beginner anyway just because I don't really want to get frustrated just in case I have any troubles. So we're going to play on beginner mode. Begin with these settings. I've already changed all my other settings like inverted controls, turning off uh, uh, vibration, things of that sort. Those have already been turned off. And I already have turned on captions, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna skip through this because I don't need to. I don't need to read it. This is the the keyboard, the, the not the keyboard, but the uh, controls of the game, obviously. And it tells you in other pages here. And then you skip to the pages where you go onto these things. It gives you uh, other way, other commands you have. You can block. After blocking, you can press X to perform. The, you can press X to basically perform a counterattack. So you can like press uh, you you block, and then you can counterattack. You have, you are, we already have access to high jump and double jump, so you can press jump once and press jump again to leap higher and you know press circle mid jump to jump even higher in the air, that kind of thing. You can use the left stick and press square to do a like a dash, so pretty much it combines. <clears throat> from what I remember from Birth by Sleep, which has been a while since I actually played it, I believe that each character, Noct uh, Noctus, <laughs> it's not Final Fantasy, close enough, but it's not Noctus, uh, Ventus, Terra and Aqua each had a different kind of travel ability. I think Terra could do the dash. Um, Aqua, I think, could like jump and then like sort of like ju jump jump kind of like what this what this one here was. You can kind of like jump in one way, and like jump a different direction. And I think Ventus could just do like a straight up double jump. He, she couldn't. He couldn't like jump a different direction like Aqua can. <clears throat> Um, in, in, that's how Birth by Sleep was. Here in Fragmentary Passage, Aqua can do all three. She can do the dash, or she can do the jump and, and jump and then jump a different direction, and she can dash. And then, of course, here it tells you about magic, you know, how you can use magic, you can attack. Um, you know, we, uh, unlike, uh, original Birth by Sleep, this one actually has MP, so when you cast your magic abilities, um, you use, you, you have to use, you have to have MP in order to cast them. And I believe that the game starts, or actually Aqua starts, automatically with uh, the Tier 3 magic. You can see at the bottom left-hand corner here, Fyraga, Blizzaga, Thundaga, Kuraga. We start with all of the Tier 3 magic, so we don't have to work our way up from Fire to Fyra to Fyraga, and so on and so forth. Um, also, Kuraga is... Uh, it uh, takes all your MP, regardless of how much you have. Whether you have 1 MP or 10 MP, casting Kuraga... Uh, I was going to say cast Kuraga on yourself, but there's no other party member, so it's always going to be on yourself. But casting Kuraga uh, takes up all your MP, and then you have to wait for it to charge, which I'm pretty sure the next page probably says that. Yeah, there it is. We run out of MP. MP charge is activated. Spells cannot be cast during this time. Once a pink gauge is depleted, your MP gauge is fully restored. So, um, so you can cast magic all you want. Um... Once you run out of MP, obviously you have to wait for it to recharge. You can use items to, uh, I guess, sort of reduce your cooldown and get MP back. And of course, if you're, you can also use items to restore MP even before you run out. So you say you got like a, you got three MP left. Instead of waiting for it to run out, you can use a, like I think I think it actually is an Ether, or you can use an MP restoration item to get all your MP back. You don't have to wait for MP charge in order to get it back. And of course, if you use an, an MP restoration item during MP charge, it either, it lessens the gauge, so it kind of makes the cooldown go by quicker. Which, if I remember, the MP charge time isn't very long anyway. I think it's at most maybe five or six seconds, which isn't very long. At least my memory serves. Um, you can battle situation commands as you uh, as you do damage to enemies. You can see you get you get a little arrows that pop up once you get er once you get three full arrows. You do a little bit more. It's you get what's called situation commands, which is kind of like the command styles in Birth by Sleep. You get the option of cast of uh, using things like Spellweaver and Fyraja, which Fyraja is essentially sort of like Tier 4 fire. It's an even stronger version of Tier 3 fire. Uh, depending on what you've done, uh, during, while the while those three arrows are being filled, depending on what you've done, different abilities will unlock. Like I said, Fyraja down here uses a lot of fire attacks. You could potentially unlock Fyraja and use that. Um, the difference here in this game 
is Aqua only gets one uh, command style change, and that's to Spellweaver. She doesn't change to Blade Charge or Wing Blade or anything of that sort. She only gets one, and that's just Spellweaver, unfortunately. So it's very much a slimmed down version of the Birth by Sleep um, battle system. Um, also, you don't have to worry about switching between commands or anything of that sort. You pretty much just have the, the standard attack magic item. Um, you don't have to worry about having to switch to, say, Ars Arcanum or Sonic Blade to throw your Keyblade or anything like that. You don't get those abilities. Um, at least I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure you don't. You just get just a straightforward uh, attack abilities. Pretty much they combine Kingdom Hearts 1's uh, battle system, which is attack, magic, and so forth, with Birth by Sleep, and the fact you still have, in a sense, sort of like uh, command styles, but you don't have to sw swap between a list of items, a list of abilities in order to do them. And also, all, all your abilities, which are pretty much just magic skills, require MP, whereas in Birth by Sleep, you had no MP. You just had to wait for the ability that you wanted, if it was magic or whatever. You had to wait for it to charge before you could use it. Uh, you spell weaver. You can if you want to. So you got uh, if you got multiple commands. If you don't want to, if you want to wait to use Fyraja and you want to use Blizzaja instead, you can switch to that. Or if you want to use spell weaver over it, whatever, you switch to it using up and down. Um, some situations will let you transform your battle style with style change or let you unleash powerful spells. That's the spell weaver thing I was just talking about. Uh, Aqua still has the shot lock from uh, Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. Um, it's, just, it's only one ability, it's just called Prism Rain, and it works pretty much the same way. You hold R1 to lock onto a target, you'll get a reticle, and you look around the targets on, and then press X to attack. Um, the focus gauge is what you use in order to use shot lock. The more focus you have, the longer the shot lock, the more enemies you can lock onto with, with shot lock. I don't, I don't want to say more enemies, because if you're fighting one big enemy, let's say the more times you can fire your shot lock, I should say. Uh, more times you can lock on with it. I should say not necessarily more enemies, but how many times you can lock on. So whether you're targeting 20 enemies or one big enemy 20 times, the more focus you have, the more times you'll be able to lock on to a target, whether it's multiple targets or one big one. That should be a better way to describe it. And then you can get uh, what they call objectives here, which are basically sort of like miniature tasks that you can do. Uh, in example number one, there, fe defeat the shadows. You'll get you know the little shadows from from Kingdom Hearts one. You defeat thirty of those, and you get a little item. And these items are usually just um, cosmetic decorations that you can change Aqua's Aqua's outfit. You can see full, fulfill specific conditions to complete objectives, and you'll be rewarded with clothing and accessories for Aqua's wardrobe. You can kind of fancy her up, if you will. But my problem is, it only you only see those changes in the gameplay, in the actual actual on battle gameplay. Anytime it changes to a cutscene, all of those changes are reverted back to Aqua's original look. So I think it's kind of silly to have these things if you don't even get to see them in the in the uh, in the cutscenes. And these cutscenes are still in engine cutscenes. These aren't pre rendered cutscenes, but they but you can also change. Aqua's colors of her outfit as well. If you don't add any accessories or anything, because I actually did this the first time I played, I changed her. I changed some of her colors a little bit, and those colors didn't stay when it went into a, a cutscene. Went back to her default outfit, and then when it came out of the cutscene, went back into regular gameplay. Her color, the colors that I chose came back. So personally, I think this is just a waste of time and a pointless venture here. You see, there's an example of some uh, parts you can put on. You can put ear, you can put little ears on her, little like I guess wings, sort of. You can change her, what do you want to call that little drapery that she's got on the side of her outfit, that kind of thing. So, you know, that's pretty much, that's the, that's the sum of uh, the little intro here. So we're going to just, uh, I give you the, I'll give you the short version of it, and so let's get started. Again, these events happen way after the events of Birth by Sleep, and uh, near the end of the events of Kingdom Hearts 1. And you'll see what I mean by how close to the end of the King Hearts One by what happens in this game. You'll see that you'll see the connection to, uh, eventually. You see, this looks like the battlefield where we uh, fought Xehanort. 
And you see there's Xehanort's Keyblade as well. And there's all the Keyblades from the Keyblade War. But if Xehanort was defeated, then who the hell is that? I saw her in the realm of darkness. Now remember in Kingdom Hearts 1, we know that Mickey was in the uh, uh, realm of darkness because that's where he got the Keyblade. Uh, the, the realm of darkness Keyblade because we saw him with it on the other side of the door at the end of Kingdom Hearts 1. And we saw, we know, and it's not spoiler because we saw that much. Because we they talked about it in uh, the uh, journal as well as in, the, in an actual, uh, that machine that Sora was talking about saying there were two keyblades that's how to close the final door one of the one the light keyblade which is what Sora had and the keyblade of the dark realm which is the one that that uh, Mickey obviously had as so we saw that there now right here there's some music playing it's another uh, uh, a remixed version of simple and clean from Kingdom Hearts 1 but I, of course, you know, for protection for copyright, I've muted it. So I apologize for no audio here. It's actually a pretty interesting version. But uh, if you want to hear it, I'm sure you can find it somewhere. I'm sure somebody's uploaded it with, and you know, without copyright issues or whatever. Those are the wayfinders that uh, they had. Some clips from uh, Birth by Sleep. One thing that I truly, truly love about this game uh, is the is the uh, I'll admit for video uh, video games I love you know, I love games that really look good. Uh, I will I'd be willing to overlook a subpar story. I've said this before a, a, a subpar story in some cases if the game looks really, really good. Not saying this has a subpar story, but I'm saying I, I really love really good visuals in video games. I think some would call me a graphics whore, I guess. So I kind of am. Uh, that said, what I really like about about Fragmentary Passage, and you'll see it here when I get out of this cutscene and I get you all the gameplay, is how much the actual gameplay looks so much like this pre-rendered video here. How, good, how great quality this video is here. The gameplay quality, visually, is almost the exact same, and usually you don't see that. In the other Kingdom Hearts games, you've got a really good quality intro video, cutscenes and stuff, but when you get into the gameplay, you can kind of see it's not the, it's not quite as good. you got, you know, the, the, the fingers are a little more squared. There are times when the NPCs or even some of the main characters' faces don't really have moving animated jaws and lips. They just kind of have a lip that are going, you know, that kind of thing. You can see that in the other Kingdom Hearts games. Here in this one, the visual is the visuals between the cutscene and the in end engine game footage, actual in game engine gameplay, is 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 almost the exact same. Because there were so many times I was like, okay, is this actually the game or am I, am I actually, oh I'm actually playing the game? Because it just it looks so much like the cutscenes. I'll show you what I mean when I actually get into the game. It's just how big a difference this game looks compared to the other Kingdom Hearts games. And I'm talking about all the ones that I've played, again, through, from the collections. I haven't, I haven't done anything like some of the other, some other ones, like things called oh. Union X or something like that. Can I haven't played that, but... You see, this is actually in-engine here. Look how beautiful this game is. Or you should be able to recognize where we are here. This is, this is Cinderella's world. But it's not actually Cinderella's world. We're in an area called the Dark World. We're, remember that uh, Mickey said that uh, uh, he saw her, or her, referring to Aqua, in the Dark Realm, the Realm of Darkness. That's where, that's what, excuse me, that's where Aqua is right now. This tutorial will teach you the basic controls. We're going to say no, I already know how to play the game. But just look at this. Look at, look how, look how she looks. 
It's just so the shadows and the the quality of her of, of her, you know, of her model and, and just you know and the, and the environment. I mean, save the fact that I know that I'm in the game when I'm actually in the gameplay. This looks just like the cutscene we just watched, and that is incredible for a Kingdom Hearts game. 